stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's Let's see it. Come on. You guys already got a shirt, but you're going to get another one because you're doing so good. I see you. That wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose. Oh, that's good right there. That's good. All right, check it out. I pulled these three rhythmic gymnasts from the audience. What's your name? Samantha. Samantha, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you doing? What's your name? Katya. What is it? Katya. Katya, very nice name. What gym are you from? Texas Rhythmic. Okay, I didn't know. That was, that's beautiful. I love Montana. Where? What's your name? Jessica. Jessica, and where are you from? Chicago. Chicago, okay. One Chicago person, a few, okay. All right, I got some trivia questions for you. We're going to see who can answer the most of these, okay? Like, it's going to be like a competition. I'm just making this up right now. Like, boom, all right? Here's the first one. Are you guys ready? You sure? You seem nervous. Don't be nervous. They're extremely difficult. And the first one to answer, you just blurt it out. In what year did the gymnastic, did rhythmic gymnastics become an Olympic sport? She's like on it but didn't know. Okay, that's, that's good. I like that power. But just hold on. Um, rhythmic gymnastics, what year did it become an Olympic sport in the Olympics? 19 what? 1984 is not correct. Apparently not. 
That's not what my sources told me. Is that correct? 1984? No, exhibition does not count. 1996. Okay, well, a lot of people are upset here. I don't make the rules, I just read them, okay? All right, here we go. This will throw them off. Who was the first individual rhythmic Olympian? I'll ask these guys over here. Who was it? Who was the first individual rhythmic Olympian? For the US. Okay, now they don't know. Now they don't know. There have been five athletes to represent the USA in the Olympics for rhythmic gymnastics. Do you know who they are? Yes. Oh, wait, hold on. You got to say them out loud. Uh, do you want to just start from the beginning? Yeah. Laura Zung, Julie Zetlin, Mary Sanders. Oh, oh Tamora Robinson and the Valerie. I don't, I don't remember her name. Jessica David. That's it. Starting off in 1996 with Jessica Davis. That's what I'm talking about. You guys are all winners. Let's all give them t-shirts. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to night two from the 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My name is Evan Heider alongside three talented coaches, athletes, judges. They've done it all in their respective disciplines. We're going to get into the action tonight, starting with women's tumbling. It's gonna be Melissa Doucette of Roots Gymnastics sitting next to 2012 Olympian Steve Gluckstein. Steve is going to be enlightening us on the uh, ins and outs of all of our tumbling and trampoline disciplines tonight. We're gonna see the women on tumbling and trampoline, and then the men will take on the double mini. Steve, what can we expect from, from an overview this evening? So y judging on yesterday's performances, it looks like everyone's very prepared at this national championship, more so than others, because they are vying for a World Games seat, uh, which will happen in just a little over a month. Set underway for her first pass. This will be the straight one, remember. Second is whip twisting. Whips to handspring to a beautiful double A. Very nice. A little quick on the landing there. I'm not sure if the judges will take a deduction. They can. They don't always, they don't always do. Um, but again, they're looking for a solid control landing there. Very nice start for Doucette. Strong form throughout. Now we're going to take a look at the senior national group. This is Dasha Boltovic, Natalie Burand. Elizaveta Marenzon, Nicole Sladkoff, and Kristina Sobolevskaya. They're performing with five hoops. Again, this is the group that has been traveling internationally and representing Team USA this year. Brand new as of this year. They chose them last year, so very fresh group. This routine tends to get higher scores for them internationally than their routine that they did yesterday with the ball on rope. With group, they also have a set of dancing steps for eight seconds as individual gymnasts do. And with, for them, it's super important to have the synchronicity. Intensity of the music building. They're going to toss. Clean catches throughout. Exactly, super important for the athlete to throw exactly to the other gymnasts. Otherwise, you see that they always run and that's a deduction for loss of trajectory and running after the apparatus. One important note, this rhythmic national group carries seven athletes with them. And Rebecca, can you kind of explain the strategy behind different girls doing different exercises and apparatus? So right now they're trying to kind of select the five that are the most stable. However, they do alternate the athlete just because they're so new in group. So it's good to give opportunity to multiple gymnasts. And they always need to have in reserve just because injuries <laughs> tend to happen. So they want someone who has been training with them, has 
has been able to compete sometimes with their teams to be able to take the spot rather than just grabbing someone fresh in the case of someone getting injured. And it also speaks to the competitive nature within your own group. So, you know, trying to establish yourself as a consistent contributing member over the next four years, prepping for that hopeful Olympic berth in 2020. Exactly. The fact that last year the group did compete at the Olympics, obviously now there's high expectations for this group to get a spot, and there only five athletes can go, so it's every athlete is working for themselves, meanwhile also collaborating as a team. Very difficult passes here. Great routine for them, very consistent. A few runs after the equipment here and there, but very good routine for the girls. That's the senior rhythmic group, Baltovic, Ferrand, Marinzon, Sladkov, and Sobolevskaya. Our next competitor will be Rachel Thevenot of Elmwood, competing in tumbling. Again, remember, this is the straight pass, where we won't see any of the twisting elements during the first pass. So I believe they're allowed up to a half twist, which is why yesterday we saw a uh, Biles or a double A half in a straight pass. And there's a beautiful double A there in the middle to a double back pike. Incredible that it's such a young age tumbling out of doubles. You don't see that too often, very impressive. And finds the landing zone, really took that double layout up in the control and tightness that she maintained. Very nice from Fethenop. Moving over to our first look at men's now double mini. This will be Malik de Pasquale. So this is a very exciting event to watch. I love the explosion of their mounter. There's a full and half out straight to a full and full out straight. Stuck landing. All in all, a clean pass. Fair amount of difficulty, but as we'll see hopefully later on, some of these men will be doing some triple somersaults. Exciting things to come in men's double mini as we get our first look tonight at Acro. It's the 13 to 19 women's group. L last night they did the balance exercise. This is their dynamic routine of Allen Maynard and Vance of Aerials Athletics Ohio. As I mentioned uh, yesterday, the dynamic routines have changed from two minutes uh, to minutes and 30 seconds now just to two minutes so they're shorter which I think helps make the overall uh, composition of the routine better we call that a Rosamond to hands so it's from hands to the floor to hands on the bases and then a souffle Layouts. And Marie, can you talk a bit about the spacing between the athletes? So the judge is looking for everything comprehensively, so u uniformity in the way they space themselves out. They are looking for them to have consistent space between them that's even, as well as uh, synchronized dance. And they want to see you also hit different levels. So they want to see you go uh, be low to the floor, high. Uh, like I mentioned yesterday, the artistry scores as uh, judging has uh, been simplified, which makes it much easier for the judges. And one of the things that's a category in there is uh, the synchronization and the spacing of all of the athletes, which they're doing a good job in. Double tuck, a little open in the tuck, they'll get hit in execution for that. Putting the final touches on the two-minute dynamic routine, Alan Maynard and Vance. Our first look at Acro tonight. Remember, we'll see a variety. If they did the balance exercise, they'll tonight do dynamic and then vice versa. So we'll see, again, a lot of variety through Acro. Our first look at Angel Rice this evening, a Flip City South 
her first pass in women's tumbling. Another double lay, a little trouble getting out of it. Wow, and a major kick out in that double back pike dismount. Impressive amount of power as you see. She lost a little bit of control, but went through and that, that is impressive to get that double back pike at that height. Kind of a 12 o'clock kick out there at the end. <laughs> More like six o'clock on the flip of four. <laughs> we are now moving to our second rhythmic group. They represent their club. This is Rhythmic Dreams. Maria Brazavianu, Karen Chen, Rachel Gu, Amy Kaluzny, Smiranda Sally, and Nina Wong. Yes, this is the, the group's first time competing nationally. They sh are first year FIG senior group, which is very neat to have a second team. Most of these athletes came from the Junior Olympic level. Here you see a lack of synchronicity already, which will obviously uh, be a large de deduction if it stays consistent throughout the entire routine. And one of the biggest limiting factors of having more than one rhythmic group, you all obviously have to be in the same location and sacrificing individual conquests for a group effort, not usually seen in rhythmic, so that's why it's so unusual to see a group, another group performing. Exactly. Th these girls were all on one team originally doing individual and then they were doing junior Olympic group. So for them it was convenient to switch on to FIG senior group. However, the group we saw before, some people have moved from all over th the country to pursue group. Here actually one of the athletes is significantly older than the rest. She already had a kid and she's back doing gymnastics, which is very rare to see. Actually, probably the first time in USA an athlete's ever done that. Internationally, it has been seen. Speaks to the passion of sport, transcending years and life stages. We've seen it already throughout. A little reach mm -hmm. for that catch there. Tiny bobbles of the apparatus again. Having this head-to-head -head comparison, you see a group coming from the JO program, now stepping up into the big leagues. Yes, you definitely see a comparison, but it is nice to see another group try, and it's always good to see more teams pursuing group and more athletes in general pursuing group because it opens up way more opportunities for the athletes as well. And in group, they're allowed to do two different elements at one time, as you saw before. So sometimes they highlight an athlete's strength by having her do one individual element as the rest do another one. No major mistakes with their routine. Obviously, a few issues with uh, synchronicity and running for the apparatus, but pretty good routine for their first nationals. Russell Vianu, Chen, Gu, Kaluzhny, Sally, and Wang of Rhythmic Dreams giving us another look at the five hoops we're looking now to women's tumbling. This is Eliza Floysen of Wasatch. Another young tumbler. You see these, a lot of these girls are 17, 18 years old. It's their first or second year in the senior elite division. But they are throwing some big passes. We already saw two double layouts in the middle of their tumbling pass. We'll let's see, and there's another one. These girls are going after it a little slow and has to finish with a layout there. I'm sure that's not what she had planned, but she should be happy to get that under her belt and, and maybe can come through with a stronger second pass. Split second decisions sometime have to be made, choosing to go a safe route, just a back layout to end Floysen's first pass. We'll see how she comes back in her twisting pass as we move over to uh, double mini. This is Nicholas Maloney of Dulles Gymnastics. Gymnastics. out tuck mounter to a full in straight landing in zone a in the red and again you see his toes touch that red line on the trampoline that used to be a penalty but is no longer a penalty so he is a-okay in that division nicholas maloney with his first pass on double mini moving now to our next dynamic routine and 
Acro. This is Chang, Gladkova, and Pizza. These girls are going into the second day in first place. Let's see if they can keep the position. Really intentional choreography moving right along with each other. Nice close double pike to cradle, double pike off. It's very similar in all the other uh, gymnastic sports. You want to see a nice close body shapes, but you also get a deduction for amplitude um, between not the floor and the top, but from the top and the bases. They are right in front of the judging right. panel. You can see them making eye contact. That's got to be an intimidating thing to try and teach, but these girls are bringing the intensity in their dynamic exercise. And it's always impressive to see the younger athletes, uh, the tops, selling the routine just as well as the bases. Another really double pike. high double pike. Nice height there. Also looking for variation in the body positions. So we did see some uh, tucks in their tumbling. And there's a double front tuck. A nice pull as well doing a good job of keeping the amplitude throughout the routine and their skills. That was good. Excellent choreography throughout, solid landings on all of their elements. They'll do their best to stay in first place after that exercise. Moving now to the second pass in women's tumbling. It's Melissa Doucette. Starting with a 31-8 for her first pass. third place overall after that. One thing that set her apart from the rest of the competitors, her form throughout was really tight. There's a pull, whips, keeping her speed to a full in pike. Pumped about it. <laughs> she's very happy and she should be. You'll see she's kept her speed throughout, e even got a little bit faster throughout those whips to the handspring full in which is what the judges are looking for. They're, they don't want to see that, that break in speed or that slowing down, especially after one of those larger middle skills, like a, a back pull or even a double back. We'll see where Melissa Doucette ends up. It's a field of four competitors in this flight. Maliki Pasquale with his second pass on double mini. Half out tuck mounter to a Miller tuck off Malik the landing Miller area. And you could tell he landed very close now to that, well, just, just straight up in that red zone. And it's hard to get the correct amount of bounce in the direction you want to go. Ends up with some landing difficulties. Lily Mizuno now with clubs. After yesterday, Lily is currently in seven which is lower than probably she expects, but with the senior pool being so intense, so close that every routine matters, every mistake, every correct element will affect the all around standing. Extremely over split position, gorgeously held. Yeah, she's a super flexible, super light gymnast. Very good with her body difficulties. Another example of her flexibility. Very nice ponche spin for her. The crowd gasping inside the BMO Harris Bradley Center.
Tonight we're going to see the ribbon and the club exercises. Rebecca, can you tell us if you had a preference of, you know, which two you did on the same night, or do they just try and keep these athletes prepared for whatever may come their way? Well, it tends to always be hoop and ball on the first day and clubs and ribbon on the second day. So usually that's just what we were grown to remember to learn. It's just the way it is now. So if they change, it'd be very odd for us. I was a fan of day one more than day two. <laughs> <laughs> Lily Mizuno starts her day two. Tiny bobbles at the end in the choreography there, but overall a really good presentation for clubs. Moving now to the second pass of Rachel Thev Thevenot. Rachel start with the beautiful first pass, double lay, the double pike. We'll see what she has in store. Round off back full. Lost a little bit of speed, picking it back up to a full in pike, another full in pike. Here you can see what set, sets her apart, those straight legs, that tight pike position, just what the judges are looking for, a very clean dismount. Nice for Thevenot there. This is Nastasia Generalova, California Rhythms with Clubs. Nastasia had a very good day for herself yesterday, currently sitting in fourth. Another demonstration of Anastasia's interesting takes on routines, different choices of music. Very sharp athlete. And she's very quick and precise with all of her movements. Here she attached the mastery to her wrist. Wow. Very nice. And in rhythmic, it's basically any element in the routine can make you say wow. So at this level, to have something truly outstanding really that catches your eye. Sometimes even in the dancing steps, they wow the judges. And now with masteries being an important asset of the routine, often those tend to be the highlights of the routines. Very nice. It looks like everyone's in a really strong fighting mood today. Hopefully it continues out through the night. Bringing the intensity in her first apparatus of the evening is Nastasia Generalova as we get a look at Angel Rice prepping, prepping for her second pass. Angel Rice has a very big following on Instagram, about 350,000 followers. She's very big in the cheerleading world, almost like a liaison between power tumbling and cheerleading. A back fold, ooh, and just couldn't quite get the height on that full, full tuck. Looks like she Stung it just a little bit there, taking her time to collect herself. Coach and medical staff coming over. And you can see when, when those things happen, um, uh, you know, took off and actually wasn't rotating quite enough to get that to her feet. And then, uh, you know, you're just kind of along for a ride in the air at that point, trying to put yourself in the best possible position to land as safely as you can. We can tell you that she's sitting up and appears to be getting the attention she needs for a lower leg injury. Ladies and gentlemen, Angel Rice of Flip City South. Up and moving with assistance off, and we will continue with men's double mini. Never easy to see an athlete go down, but un an unfortunate reality of all of these disciplines. Something to you know, keep in mind for all athletes out there, it's it's never easy. Stepping up now, Nicholas Maloney. Now on double mini with his second pass for Dulles Gymnastics, Nicholas Maloney. Nick's uh, another first year senior elite. I'm sure he's pumped to be here on this big stage. Half out pike mounter to a full and full out straight and another little hop off the landing area. 
That'll cost him 1.0 from each execution judge. It looks like he clipped the pads there, so he might not get credit for that skill. We'll have to see what the judges award him with. Looking now to Eliza Floysand, her second pass to close out this first flight of competition on day two. Getting herself psyched up. Round off back to full. Whips, handspring, full and straight, just comes up short. That is too bad, a strong pass. Looks like she knows exactly, sometimes in the moment, you set that back handspring too wide, can't take the skill up quite enough. That closes out rotation number one at the 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships. We'll be back with more action after this. Oh yeah. Careful. This side over here has very little dancing skills. Very little dancing skills. This section is solid. All right, here we go, check it out. I got this family here that they said, I want to be on trampoline, it's been his dream. What's your name, sir? Robbie. Yeah, he stopped me and Robbie's just like, John, I've, my whole life, all I've thought about is bouncing trampoline, but I've never had the chance to get on trampoline. He, you own a trampoline though, right? Yes, I do. Why haven't you been on it yet? Don't touch it. Okay, don't touch it. Forbidden territory, and what's your name? Drew. And this is your father, correct? Yes. Are you excited that he's going to actually learn trampoline now? Sure. Okay. Well, we have Steven Gluckstein here. He was an Olympian. Yeah, Olympian for trampoline. Yeah. And he's going to be your teacher. Feel bad for you. Okay. So let's get up here, okay? Help him up, Steven. All right. Oh, perfect. You already got it. Okay. Well, let's see what camera we're on here. Are we right here? Yeah, okay, check it out. J just slowly step on it and just check it out. This isn't your Walmart trampoline, okay? This is like standard issue, bounce you through the roof. So just go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just walk out there. There you go. Okay, okay, simmer, simmer. Okay, and I just stand to the side there. And, and Gluckstein, get on there and show him how to just bounce and do a, you know, a, a stop. Yeah. Hold on, let me get a mic on you. Well, well first you gotta jump and go high, okay? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna jump, and you go, hi. And then we bend both knees to absorb the landing, all right? Seems easy, right? Right there in the middle. Hi, good, nice, excellent landing, there you go. I think we should take him to the seat drop level. Seat drop, maybe? Yeah, stand right here. Glockstein will show us a seat drop. This is this is like this is like Olympic type stuff right here that you could take home with you. Right. Your legs. legs are gonna go straight out in front of you together. Your hands, fingers forwards, are gonna be on the trampoline right next to your bottom. 
and not behind you, right next to your bottom. You're going to push the trampoline to bounce yourself back up, just like this. Here we go. Oh, you got this. Yeah, if you can do this, you're going to win a free trip to Wisconsin tomorrow. Let's see. Oh, that's perfect. I think he should do a backflip now. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Okay, this is unbelievable. You have talent. You should go into trampoline for sure. How do you feel so far? Terrified. Okay. Well, we could show him a swivel hip real quick. Do we have time for the swivel hip? How much time do we have? All right. Go ahead. Show him a swivel hip. I got no answer from anybody, so I'm just going to do it anyways. Yep. Swivel hip. Oh, you got this. It's got, now this is like gold medal type stuff, okay? This is what they're doing in the big leagues. If, if he makes this, Glutstein says you're on the team. Now careful. That counts. That counts. That counts. Solid performance. All right. Come on over here. We got t-shirts for you. Yes. We got a signed t-shirt for you from, I think Glutstein signed it somewhere. If he didn't, uh, he will. And then we got one for your daughter too. Yeah, we got one for your daughter there, too. You can give it to her. I thought he was going to. Oh, he's got his pen right here. All right, give these guys a big round of applause. Come on down, guys. Back live at the 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships, starting with 2016 Olympic Reserve athlete Camilla Feely with the clubs. Camilla is currently second after yesterday's two events. However, they still have, after today, two more teams. They also have top 12 will compete another four. Trap catch there. Camilla tends to do a lot more rotations under her throws than most athletes do. And she shows that, especially in her clubs routine. Also. Drop there, which is very unfortunate, but it won't be a very large deduction. Very nice. Again, another team is showing Camilla's unique style of gymnastics. Mastery into that toss. Exactly, very difficult. Here you see Camilla has very good connections and very difficult catch over there with the release. So much that goes on in her routine. It's very good to see her so calm. And that's why, as Rebecca mentioned, even the small drop won't factor in hugely to the score oh. because of the difficulty she does. Ugh, an unfortunate end as she clutches those clubs. They didn't do what she wanted them to do. Camilla Feely will be disappointed with a couple points in that routine, but again, a ton of difficulty on display. Moving now to the first pass in the second flight of competition for women's tumbling. This is Natalie Ori, Team Revolution. And she has scratched, so we will now move to Alex Rankert. Alex is one that has a few world championship uh, medals. Very, very talented athlete. Let's see what he has for us here at the national championships. Full and half out straight. Gorgeous. Tula Miller straight with great execution. Body perfectly straight, legs tight and together, just what the judges are looking for. And almost perfect landing, just a small step that'll take one tenth from his execution score. And again, looking at the rest of the competitors that we've seen tonight, putting himself in a class of his own so far is Alex Rankert as we move to our next dynamic routine in the women's group, Bogowitz, Nubla, and Wong of NCA. girls yesterday had a little bobble in their first skill. Let's see if they can stay
stay strong for their dynamic routine. That was a good start with the boost layout. Individual tumbling, which I'm really happy they took out of senior competition as a requirement. Do you feel like it just detracted from the rest of the routine? I did. I leave individual tumbling to, tumbling to artistic gymnasts that they do very well and ha let acrobats do what they do well, which is acrobatic skills. My personal opinion, but I know a lot of people share that same opinion. Very fair. Clean double pike there. Again, it's important on those toss elements to land close to the bases who are throwing you. Can't put too much distance in there. So while it helps them that they're close in size for artistic score reasons, dynamic, they have to work harder to gain that amplitude, so the top really has to work. And they are doing a very good job. That was a nice pull. Um, looks like a little issue with the dance. Setting up here, thinking on their feet, keeping it moving. Right. And again, in acro, we've talked about in the past, you, you learn to communicate in different ways just with a look. Right. They were definitely looking at each other and they figured it out. A couple mistakes. Excellent display of the camaraderie. Right, they were able to work through it. Bogowitz, Nubla, and Wong. Moving now to the first pass of Brienne Millard of World Elite. World Elite's a uh, very well-known gym in the trampoline world, and Brienne is starting to bring that name to tumbling as well, and you'll see why. The round off, whips, handspring to double pike, a kick out, not quite at 12 o'clock, but a kick out nonetheless, a clean pass. She should be happy. Giving the first one under her belt is Coach Austin White. Gives her a hand for that effort. Now moving over to Casey Chandler of Legacy TNT. Casey Chandler is a fun one to watch. He really pushes the limits where other people play it safe and go for the score. He goes for the gold All right. every single time. Thanks for the heads up. I'm going to hold my breath during this one. It's a full and half out straight to a double full out. No <laughs> twist in the first one, all the twist, the double full in the second flip. Finds the landing here, breaks tiny form, form breaks. A little bit, but a stuck landing. I'm sure he's happy to have that as his first pass. Good effort for Casey Chandler as we move now to Heather Chan of Emerald City with clubs. Heather did not have the best day for herself yesterday, so she really is looking to redeem herself after yesterday. It's important for an athlete after a rough day to get back into the gym and start fresh. And again, in other disciplines, there's births to the world games on the line. American Laura Zhang has already claimed the rhythmic spot. So competitors going for individual national championships that we will award tonight and then also national team spots. Yes, and later in September will be the World Championships where two athletes will go. It's still a name within the next few months. there was a little time between the preparation for the next element where it's super crucial to kind of keep the routine flowing with non-stop. Clean catch for Heather Chan to end her club's exercise. We'll see her one more time this evening with ribbon. 
Moving back over to women's tumbling, this is Hope Bravo of Eagle Gymnastics, Texas. A lot of support behind Hope. I think she goes for her straight pass, non-twisting. Whips, clean whips, a lot of speed to a double lay. Hard to slow down when you're moving that fast. Full extension in the air, controls it to stay in that preferred yellow landing zone. Moving now to Matthew Hawkins of Aspire. So far we've seen two of the double mini athletes land on the landing area and bounce off. So it's already a big advantage if you can stick this landing in the red. Oh, and he almost had it and steps outside the zone B. Snuck that last twist in there on this final okay. element. Watch that, it's uh, right there. A little bit of pause. Snuck it around there for Matthew Hawkins. Moving now back over to Acro. This is Newland, Smiley, Rooney, and Swarthout of Legacy. Their dynamic routine in the 13 to 19 age group. So far we haven't heard a lot of routines with words in it. I would anticipate over the next couple of seasons we're gonna see that a lot more. Double toe pitch, double pike. You don't see a lot of front tuck tumbling from the athletes, so that's a nice treat. Differentiator from the crowd. Mm -hmm. And again, remember yesterday we were talking about the uh, size of all of the athletes compared to one another, taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. Not much parity between these athletes, so not opportunity to deduct. Right, the top really has to work along with the bases in order to generate power. It's always great though to see a lot of these tops who um, outgrow being a top become some of our most talented bases. So it's always great that they can see that they have growth. The one on the left, she used to be a top and she's moved into being a base and they move up in level quicker because they've already been at that level and they have a lot of experience. Double tuck a little, a little low, not bad. The idea is you want them to finish the, the rotation on their own with very little support from the bases. So when they have extra support, there is a little bit of execution deduction. Overall, nice routine. That's Newland, Smiley Rooney, and Swarthout of a legacy, their dynamic routine. Now we'll move to Alex Rankert. Remember, he blew the roof off the first pass. He'll look to do the same here in his second. Alex scored a 38-0 in his first pass and is a few points in the lead in a sport where you usually win by a few tenths. Full in, half out, pike to a triple back pike dismount. It looks like he could have hit that 12 o'clock kick out and it would have helped him. But beautiful execution, so great easy position. Here. Saw the floor the entire time. Now a look at 2016 Olympian Laura Zhang with clubs. Laura surprisingly after yesterday is in third, but She's a very strong athlete mentally, so hopefully she's able to give her top performances for the next six routines. Rocking the shoulder tassels. New trends. They're always trying to make new trends with our leotards. Laura really does a great job of always moving throughout the carpet and using her artistry to her advantage. This is 
definitely a new style for Laura. She's never really taken on such a serious music. She tends to lean to classical or Spanish or dancey, so this is a very new style for her. So I like that they're trying new things with her. Yeah, I was just going to say, it looks like she herself is kind of getting used to presenting this impression for the judges. Yeah, she's still super young for a, for an athlete in general, so she has so much time to grow. So it's nice to see how they're trying different styles and trying to expand her while she still can. She's already accomplished so much, so she can only do more. Trap catch to end an intense clubs routine for Laura Zhang. Remember, she's sitting in third, so she'll look to move up with two exercises today. Now, the second pass of Brienne Millard, World Elite. Twisting pass here, so she'll be able to incorporate that. Played it safe in her first pass. No double flip right in the middle, so we'll see what she goes for here if she looks to increase that difficulty score. I know she's coming off an injury this year. There's a full to a full in pike. Not bad, a little bit of form break, but all in all, she's very clean coming down the floor. And coming back from an injury, it's important to just get back out there, get your legs literally back underneath you, <laughs> feeling good about what you're doing there as we now move to Casey Chandler's second pass. Now with his second pass on Double Lady for Legacy TNT, Casey Chandler. Having a little bit of difficulty in his first pass. Let's hope he makes up for it here in his second pass. Casey Chandler came over from Artistic Gymnastics. Alex a Renkert, again, over 30 seven points 37 five Casey Chandler throws an extra half twist in there and when your shoulders are behind your hips like that it's impossible to stand up look surprised with that outcome now it is the dynamic exercise of Handy Nethery and Nordyke this will be the last women's group in the 13 to 19 category tonight bit of a unique piece of music and movements. You see a lot of the trios start from this platform position. It's a very common position to use, especially for saltos with the re-catch. Nice. Again, Front differentiating double. themselves from the rest of the group. Those first two skills we hadn't seen from anyone else. And variation in the start and end positions is really important. Also a little bit different, a swing skill, double front pike to cradle, and linking into a double full barrel roll. Whenever you see the skills link like that together, they get extra values for that. Scoop double tuck. One thing about this group, again, differentiating themselves, their choreography is so sharp and synchronized. Not to say the other groups weren't, but they just take it to another level. And they're keeping the energy up through the entire routine, which is really important to see. Nice high double tuck at the end. You like to see the bases clearly catch her and she's finishing the rotation before she hits the floor. I like that routine, very unique, eye catching, unique and different. Agreed. Great presentation there from Handy, Nethery, and Nordyke. Closing out this rotation with our next three athletes. This is Hope Bravo, her second run. Coming off a 32 in her first pass. It's a little bit of trouble 
still pushing through and finishes with a full. I'm sure she had a double plan there. But that floor is unforgiving. For and tumbling, you, it just keeps going. You know, it's not like you can really reset. It's again talking about that in the moment thinking that these athletes, no matter the discipline, have to embody. Now moving over to Matthew Hawkins of Double Mini. Full and half out straight mounter. Full and full out straight dismount. Lands one foot in the red and one foot in the blue, so he will get nine tenth deduction for landing there in that yellow zone. Trying to hold on to it there was Hawkins. He closes out his second pass of double mini. We'll end this rotation with Serena Liu with the clubs. Serena currently sits in six. Here you, today you'll see a different side of Serena. We're here, she has Pharrell Williams for her clothes routine. Definitely different than her classical approach yesterday. And Laura Zhang, 18.084 immediately before her. So judges throwing some big numbers out there. Putting that unusual jump that we saw from her yesterday as well. Yes, it's in most of her routines. No one else here actually does it, which adds uniqueness to her routines. She fell off of her axe there so she will not get credit for the remaining part of the pivot over there. Not bad routine for Serena. She did have that one drop and slight throw off on that Fuete, but not bad for Serena. Serena Liu closes out rotation number two here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We'll be back with more from the 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships. Here we go. Come on, get on your feet, everybody. Let's do this. I have to say, with the disciplines with so much dancing, that was, we got the rhythmic and the acro. This is the power tumbling section. Is this power tumbling section? Yeah? Well, maybe that's why the dancing was not up to level, guys. <laughs> you guys are trying to tumble. That's why. I understand. Okay. Where's my, where's my, okay. My, oh, okay. You guys come down here. You guys can stay there. You don't have to leave. You guys come here. What's your name? Gracie. Gracie. What's your name? Kayla. Are you guys friends? Yes. Teammates? Yes. What gym do you guys go to? Eagle Gymnastics. <laughs> Eagle Gymnastics in the house. All right. So we're going to do a little trivia um, reaction game. Okay. You, did you see this yesterday? Yes. Okay. So now you used to be friends. Now you're arch enemies. All right. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. It's going to be very easy, and then you just got to fire out the answer, okay? And some of them might not be easy, but it's easy to find the answer. That's just a little hint for the first one. What NBA team plays in this arena? The Panthers. Bucks. Bucks. Very good. Very good. All right. You have one point. First one to three wins the prize. How you doing, bud? Fist bump. Boom. All right. Here we go. Eight plus six. Fourteen. Boom. 
You got a point. A little worried about that, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay. White and red make what color? Pink. Boom. One more, and you are the champion. All right. Here we go. 21 divided by 3. 7. Oh, my gosh. You're like, you're like so smart. Check this out. Boom. Tie dye USA Gymnastics Championships. And you get one too, even though she beats you. Can you guys shake hands? Shake hands. You're friends again. Okay, I love you. I love you. Okay, here we go. All right, give these guys a big round of applause. Back live here inside the BMO Harris Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We are starting on men's double mini Wolfgang Finesio of Fairland Gymnastics. Saw him compete on trampoline yesterday. Yeah, he had an unfortunate day. Fall in his first routine. Let's hope he can do have a better day on double mini here. And it looks like it's off to a good start. Oh, couldn't hold that landing in the red. But a nice, powerful half out pike. Look at the kick out at 12 o'clock. Full, full out, and a couple hops, which will take will take a couple tenths from his total score. Moving now to Brigitte Boutinis of Furlough Gymnastics with clubs. Brigitte sits in that eighth place spot, the last place for national team. So super important for her to stay consistent. Generally, Brigitte is a very consistent gymnast. Again, one of her focuses here making the national team. Unfortunate drop there, just as I said, she was super consistent. And is that a, a consequence of the clubs not being locked together fully? Yes, it's a consequence of that as well. Sometimes if she doesn't go quick enough for that back walkover, it has time to fly out rather than swing right to her. Timing is essential in rhythmic gymnastics. it back up through those leaps and that balance before them after a minor bobble. Exactly. They're able to continue on their team as if nothing happened, which is great, not a luxury in the other sports here today. Locking the clubs and throwing it from an illusion. Stay together this time. She's got them. finish for Brigitte. Unfortunate for that catch. Aside from that, it was a very good routine for her. Nice work for Brigitte Budginis of Burlo, moving over to Double Mini and CJ Rhodes of Amplify Gymnastics. Really quick so run. Full one half out straight. The full and full out straight. Uh -huh, and just misses the stick. Interesting twisting there. You can see he puts his head towards his chest a little bit. Whatever works for CJ Rhodes. Solid first pass under his belt. Now moving over to the women's pair in the 13 to 19 division. This is Conway and Scyther. It's really great to see these girls 
put together a really nice dynamic routine yesterday. Really nice skills with really good energy. In locate to arch. Nice level arch, good three second hold. Motion to a difficult skill, one arm handstand. Difficult in any event, especially women's pair. Two to two contact, down to one to one, and back. A little struggle there, side to split, but she recovered well. They'll just get a little deduction for that. Very nice first skill. Like the exit out of that skill too. Whatever it takes to be innovative. And again, this is one of those high energy balance routines. I think in the past it was more acceptable that this would be lower energy or slower pace, but they're bringing it here as well. They're also wearing something that's new to Acro, which is those tights, and they have jewels on them. Oh. You see, so. It's very specific, though. You can't wear tights with any design on it, but you can wear them with uh, jewels on it. Now into a needle foot skill. A little slow to press, but that's on a very difficult position. So far I'm really impressed with the level of skills this woman's pair is doing. Newly formed and some difficult skills. Needless to say as the crowd gasps there. Very good, very difficult routine. Conway and Scyther of CCG have to be happy with that. Moving over to Trey Katz of CPTC, excuse me, KPTC. Trey Katz, no stranger to the big stage out here. Huge half out pike to a beautiful full and full out straight. He just misses the stick, but you can see he's really going for that execution score. A little less difficulty. And safely in the red. Yes. <laughs> Here we go now. Eliza Cohen with the clubs. Eliza, first year senior, just looking to have a consistent competition in general for herself, potentially a spot on national team. She's a little ball of energy. Nice attitude turn for her. Alongside Generalova. Yes. Again, all the athletes here are actually from either California, Chicago, or New York City competing today. She has to reach behind her a little bit. Yes, but luckily she was quick to save, quick to react. So won't really receive a penalty for that. A little long on the preparation there. There as well. You want to keep everything flowing nice and clean. Very last cool mastery. A little bit shaky, but not bad for Eliza. First senior national championships for Eliza Cohen. Someone who it is not his first rodeo is Austin Nacy. So if someone can surpass Alex's huge passes last uh, group, it's this guy right here, Austin Nacy. Great speed leading up. Full and half out straight to a full out straight landing in the yellow. I don't think it's going to be enough to pass Alex. You can see a little buckle there. And a 
90s hemp deduction for landing there in zone B. Highlight from day one was watching the men's pair. This is Angel Felix and Braden McDougal of Realis. This will be their balance routine. A lot of uh, the spectators like their first routine, but even more so this one. To top it off again, they also do some very uh, difficult 13 to 19 uh, men's pair skills. You can see very typical in men's pairs. You don't see it, in, women do this at all, which is the balance on the head. And as the base motion, the top motions as well, they get difficulty for both motions. To a split crocodile, he gets extra points for grabbing his leg. Crowd really responding here. a pike cannonball to arch, which isn't a typical men's pair skill, but when they can do it well, it's accepted. To a low handstand one-arm flag. Very nice flag position. Oh, very cool to get down as well. Gotta throw some rock and roll into it too. They can do it all. <laughs> really risky to take this approach so you have to be work able to work with athletes who can really sell it and the boys uh, this men's pair does a very good job with that changing positions throughout a lot of their balance elements adding difficulty nice get down as well a unique ending pose with some shoulders. So much to cheer about in that routine. Great presentation from Angel Felix and Braden McDougal of Realis. Moving back over to men's double mini. This will be the first pass from Ryan Bone. a half out pike mount, a double full out, saves the landing, lands a little bit short, but looked like he was about to put his hands down, but saved it, and again, that big opening on the half out, showing just what the execution, execution judges want to see. Very nice there, his first pass, moving now to the club's routine of Katerina Kapitanova. Katerina had a really good day yesterday. Hopefully she's able to continue throughout this weekend. Katarina is also one who takes on a lot of different styles. Earlier today, her sister already claimed the junior national title. So hopefully it'll be a pair of two sisters on national team. Very nice. Katarina has great leaps also. Had to save the toss, luckily did. She will get a slight deduction for changing the trajectory, but it's better than actually dropping the club. And up till that point, no 
visible mistakes at all. Yes. Oh, she very good routine until the very last thing, unfortunately. <laughs> Will be a slight deduction for that. Focused until the very last second. Crucial. Capitonova of Isadora will be disappointed there. She'll look to rebound with her final routine and with Ribbon. Back over to Wolfgang Fanestio. Half out tuck mounter to a half and half out pike. It looked like he was going for the execution. Not very high in difficulty, but clean positions, clean kick outs. They couldn't hold on to that stuck landing in the red. Here we go with Anna Blau and Nathan Burns of Realis. 13 to 19, mixed pair. They had a very strong dynamic routine yesterday. I anticipate they're gonna keep it up with their balance skills. Interesting mount to their first skill. one press to arch what the judges are looking for is that her heels are slightly below her hips individual static skills A little struggled. They hung on to it well. Regain stability into this ring position. And the boys showcasing some flexibility as well, sliding to split and then motioning to sit. A lot more emphasis on the choreography here. Cannonball tuck to straight handstand. So one arm flag position. The top hold her head in with her ear by her arm, which is a little bit of a different technique. It's harder. artistic for you. A lot of a lot in that routine for Blau and Burns. Great presentation from all the Realis athletes here. Unmistakable choreography. Moving now to CJ Rhodes. Big half out tuck to half and half out Triffis Tuck. Going for that difficulty score. Nice opening on that half out Tuck. And just patient, patient, waiting for the trampoline and then let's her ride for that triple dismount. Trusted the bounce would put him where he needed to be. Saw the landing and took advantage of it for CJ Rhodes. Sticking with men's double mini now, looking at Trey Katz, his second pass. for the score. Double mini judges are mere feet from the actual bed, so they get a first in up close view of everything these athletes are doing. Yeah, they don't, the athletes don't get away with much. If they're trying to hide some bent knees or not pointed feet. Sometimes the judges have to stay on their toes. If they bounce out of the landing area, they'll be real, real close. Here goes Trey on his second pass, full and half out straight. 
full and full out tuck, lands in the yellow. Very powerful and clean mount. You see that full and half out showing off that straight position, but didn't quite get the lift on his second skill that looked like he wanted. Makes you wonder if that's what he had planned again. We'll never know. Moving now to Evita Gristinas of North Shore. She's the leader after day one of competition. Vita had a great day yesterday, super confident yesterday. Evita is an athlete that does everything precise, especially with her body difficulties. Very difficult to deduct anything on them just because they're so clean, so exact, her lines are super long. the axis throughout the spin. Very nice. Toss is super high. Which she has a lot to fit underneath it. Exactly, super tall, pretty gymnast. Also makes it sometimes harder to move, but she has no issue with keeping the speed throughout her routine. Similar to Camilla Feely putting a lot of elements underneath her tosses. Small Unfortunate yeah. drop there. Well, with these new code of points, there's no maximum on the amount of elements or tosses they can do. They're trying to fit as in as much as they can. Threw that back a little, but was able to save it. A little shaky towards the end, but still very good for Arvita. Kristinas finishes her first apparatus today. We'll see her later with the ribbon. We're gonna close out with two men's double mini competitors, Austin Nacy. Not the ideal first pass for Austin. Let's see if he can rebound with a better second pass, a half out pike opener to a half and half out Triffis tuck. Not bad for Austin. Came Beautiful back in that mount. red zone. Now Austin's me, I'm surprised we didn't see, he must be saving some of his bigger skills for the final. Now Austin's the only one that I know of that has ever done a quadruple flip on the double mini. He did a half out pike, quadruple back tuck, and just near stuck it at the Elite Challenge uh, about two years ago. We've seen it at the national championships before. It's a risky element, a lot to pack in even with his power. We'll see what Austin Nacy has up his sleeve for tomorrow's finals. As we move to the final competitor in this rotation, it's Ryan Bone of Five Star Elite. It's a full and half out tuck mounter and a double back tuck that turned into a pike. I'm not sure which position he was planning on. Giving us a little bit of everything there. Looks like he didn't quite make it to the second bed of the double mini. He might only get credit for his first skill. A bit of disappointment there for Ryan Bone to close out that rotation. Here we we'll go. Be back live after this. for her.
All right, guys, check it out. We're on the acro floor, and I brought out some acro uh, participants, and they claim that they have great handstands. And I know this because, you know, gymnastics meets, we do the handstand contest and everything, and they're good, they walk. And then we did it for acro one time, and we realized they could pretty much stay up for 14 days. And I was like, we're going to have to do something different. So we're doing the acro handstand walk relay race, okay? Yeah. We got, we got three teams out here. We got our start right here. They're going to walk across. They have to pass the blue until their next teammate can go. If anyone falls at any time, that team is over, done, all right? So you cannot fall, so you have to take your time. First team to get back here, all three people, wins. Are we ready? Three people are ready. Okay. Are we ready, Milwaukee? DJ Patrick, give me some handstand, relay, walk, and music. Three, two, one, go. Looking good so far. We got, we got team A out of the gate right here going pretty good. They're all taking their time, which is a very good technique, and you can go. Here we go. So far, no falls. Very good handstand here on my side. Wow, very nice job. Come on, Milwaukee, make some noise for your team. You can catch up, you can catch her. Come on, go, go, go. Oh, almost had it. Team A wins. Yes, that was awesome. Come on over here, come on over here. Yeah, that was close. Those are the best, those are the biggest steps I've ever seen. You came back from behind. Here you guys go, here's, here's some USA Gymnastics apparel for you. You can split it up by size. And Milwaukee, give them a big round of applause. Back live for the fourth rotation of action at the USA Gymnastics Championships. We'll see the rhythmic athletes with ribbon closing out their first four events. And Rebecca, talk a little bit about the format. It's super intensive, noting that the juniors only do four apparatus for their national championships. The seniors do eight. So now, when I was a junior, we also did eight, but now with combining all of the divisions together of different sports, they cut down the amount of teams juniors do, but seniors do two yesterday, two today, and then tomorrow, top 12 will do two in the morning and then do two more at night. So it's a test of consistency, it's a test of stamina, it's a test of who's able to mentally prepare eight routines. That is a day and a half. Lily Mizuno starting out a little bit of a bobble on her opening sequence, but Obviously now into a part of the routine she's very comfortable with, showing off that flexibility. Have to keep the rhythm in constant, the ribbon in constant motion. Yes, and the ribbon has to stay off the ground. It's always a deduction if the pattern remains on the floor or if it's not compact. For me, the ribbon was always the hardest apparatus, my least favorite too. use a six meter ribbon so it's so hard sometimes to control something so long very nice great 
19 for Lily. Unfortunate drop in the very beginning, but it's always good to see a gymnast recover. Lily Mizuno. And now we start the women's trampoline competition with Claire Johnson. Claire's a veteran in this field of the four girls that we'll see in this first group. She competed at the Pan American Games last year. And she's going to be showing us a first routine with six elements that do not count for difficulty and four that do. Her opening two will count for difficulty, which is opening a full and Rudy out. She's showing nice positions, clean lines in that straight body. Finishes with a Rudy out tuck and a half and Rudy out pike. Again, that Rudy is a full and a half twist. Good routine, very clean, good difficulty. Really Mike. strong start there for Claire Johnson. Now taking a look at our first senior women's group, the trio of Bushka, Sweeney, and Watterson, WCTC. Be the first routine I think today that we'll see here with words. Very nice link from a Roz handsman handstand to a souffle. <laughs> Definitely music to pump up the crowd. Queen getting a lot of representation no matter the discipline this evening in Milwaukee. Tina scored really well internationally at the World Cup events for artistry. Full in pike there. Thought they were going to come up short of rotation. Had a little extra support from the bases. of start positions so far. Helicopter nice. to double pike. Nice link skill. Everybody's got time for a guitar solo. <laughs> Trying to put an exclamation mark with this scoop element. Nice double A. Very good energy until the end. Crowd responding to Grushka, Sweeney, and Watterson. We'll see how that holds up against the other senior women's group. Now we move over to Susan Stringfellow of Eagle Gymnastics, Texas. So as we're looking for those four difficulty skills, it's important to remember that they're not allowed to repeat. However, they can make the skill different by changing the position or putting the twist in a different flip. So a double twisting, double back flip, you can put all the twist in the first or all the twist in the last, or you can split it up between the double somersault. A little bit over rotated on that back pull there, fighting to gain her height back. A half in, half out pike, half out tuck, Finishes with a full in, full out straight. That mistake will cost her a little bit, but a strong finish from Susan. Susan Stringfellow keeps it going for 10 elements. Now we move over to Nastasia Gennarolova. California Rhythms with the ribbon. Already, Nastasha just started with two masteries in like the first two seconds of her routine <laughs> already. <laughs> this shows how now these Nikoda coins are trying to just maximize the difficulty. Try to fit in as much as they can in that minute 30. The 
Toss was a little bit behind her, and you saw how she stopped and kind of delayed the rotation, which was very smart on her part. Nastasia is a very experienced athlete, though, and with experience comes all these comes the ability to make these decisions so quickly. Settling back into the routine. Another throw far away, so she wasn't able to do any rotations under that, so she won't get credit for that toss at all. At all? No, so y the requirement is to do at least two rotations, so she only did one, so she won't get credit for it at all. The harsh reality of rhythmic. <laughs> A little shaky for Nastasia. She's definitely not the best routine so far, but she'll definitely be in the top 12, so she'll be competing tomorrow. Now looking to Shay Silhan, her first routine in women's trampoline. Not ever, just tonight. <laughs> so this is, I believe, Shay's first year senior. She's from TNT Express, two-time Olympian Dimitri Polyarush, which I think half of the women's senior elite women group is from TNT Express, starting out with two of her difficulty elements. And a different look at it, it was a half in pike out. Yes, yeah, so it's uncommon. Most of the time, these trampolinists will be doing the twist in the late, oh no, and just could not get her feet down to the trampoline fast enough, coming up short. That will cost her 1.0 from each execution judge. Some valuable experience and tough lessons learned in that first routine. We'll see how she rebounds in the second. This is the next women's senior group with their dynamic routine, Benkov Lagman, Connerney, and Hall. Starting with a little bit of a unique skill, a split lay on. And a nice close double pike dismount. Very sharp movement in their choreography is another routine with words. Interesting that we're seeing both senior groups so far take advantage of that new opportunity. For me, it's still weird sometimes when I hear a routine start and then I start to hear words. <laughs> still getting used to that. Very edgy choreography. It is, and it, it gets the crowd involved in a new way, too. You can hear some of their club mates mm -hmm. saying the words along with them. Right, Acro is such an involved sport. The whole team gets involved, so it's very interesting to hear all the kids saying the words and uh, working to the words. It's really cool. And something exciting to look forward to at the conclusion of tomorrow's competition, the famous group routine that you're helping to put together this year. Yeah, I'm really excited by that. I'm really honored to work with all the athletes. It's amazing to bring them all together and see them learn a five and a half minute routine in three days. Just reminds you, like, even though they're young, they're so talented. The ability to learn and retain information, push their elements to another level, and really just show off in front of the community. Right. As these three are doing now, very clean double full moments ago. Very nice, very unique. I really like the routine. Good energy. Bentel, Flagman, Connerney, and Hall of LATA. Now, for the trampoline fans that are watching the acro, is there a difference in difficulty when they catch by the arms versus catching their body? Yes, so in acro, the value of each skill is in a book, and there is more difficulty depending on how many rotations they do and how they catch. It's a really thick book. Same in rhythmic. Getting started with Jessica Stevens of Fairland Gymnastics. Grabbing some big height before she starts this first routine. Remember, 
part of their score is how high they jumped. It's judged by lasers that are under the trampoline, and they time how long you spend in the air. So the longer you spend in the air, the higher you are. And she's showing great positions here, staying controlled in the middle. Nice kick out on that double back tuck, half out tuck, and a half in Rudy out pike to finish her routine. Sneaks that last full twist of the Rudy around, controls the landing. Very nice for Jessica Stevens. Final look today at Camilla Feely with a ribbon. Today in general, we've seen more mistakes than yesterday, but that's common with clubs and with ribbon just because those tend to be the harder events. Clubs, there's two of them. Exactly. And ribbon, there's one eight really feet long. Of it. <laughs> General Camilla has very good ribbon technique. It's always moving, always quick, has really high exact tosses. Very nice pirouette and adds an artistry factor to the end of it. Example of a super high throw with a lot of rotation, very expensive wrist. from her routine last year was very intense, high energy, just a little bit more jazzy. Yeah, it's changing it up, which is nice always. Although sometimes it's, you get used to a certain routine or you have your certain favorites and sometimes it's really sad to see them go, but it's always good to see gymnasts trying something new and changing it up. Great combination there. Great routine for Camilla. Great end to the night for her. Tons of difficulty loading in the mastery there is Camilla Feely. We'll see how she fares tomorrow. She'll do four more events. This is Claire Johnson's second routine. So their second routine consists of 10 difficulty skills. So all skills will count for difficulty. This is where you lay it all out on the line and you connect all of your hardest tricks but difficulty is not everything. They still get judged on execution, how well they do it. Are they opening by 12 o'clock? There's a new rule about keeping your lines. You must remain straight from 12 o'clock until three o'clock. They're also getting judged how high they jump. There's and time, there's, <laughs> there's lasers. There's lasers. We got it all, the bells and the whistles. <laughs> Claire starting out with a Trippus Pike, followed by a play a back layout. Clean routine, dropping a little bit of height, but still holding on to her positions and her execution. Finishing up with a full and full out straight. Claire Johnson finds a way. I think she, we were both leaning with her on a couple of those skills, but two solid routines in the books for Claire Johnson. She'll look to finals tomorrow. This is our final women's senior group. It's Eleanor Chang, Callista Davis, and Madison Freed. Very difficult pyramids yesterday in their balance routine. And we're going to see a little treat. They're going to do a triple tuck for their first skill. The what? We don't see it very often in acro, especially in the United States. Getting a lot of encouragement from the crowd. Too bad. I mean, a very difficult skill, so a little support at the end for the bases, but very nice. I'm sure they're all breathing a little sigh of relief right now, but it's right back into the elements. Double front pike, the link, and a helicopter skill. Double A. That has uh, been devalued um, when it 
since it's considered to be easier than doing it from any other position, they devalue that a little bit, but it's still worth enough to do. Nice link to middle splits, just something unique. You'll see in seniors, they'll usually do the maximum amount of skills you can do, which is eight. Tiny bit of over rotation there. Saw her feet almost in line with the bases, having to support her, make sure she's safely to her feet. Some front tumbling mixed in with the back. The repetition of the platform skills will hurt them a little bit, but with all everything else, Overall, very nice routine. Eleanor Chang, Callista Davis, and Madison Freed of EAGC with their dynamic routine. Moving over to women's trampoline, it'll be the second exercise of the day for Susan Stringfellow. Claire definitely set the bar high for the rest of this competition with a clean two routines. She had started off her optional routine, her second routine, with a Trippus Pike. Not sure if we'll be seeing any uh, more of those tonight. At least a full and half out Pike to start. Focusing on those execution scores, opening by 12 and holding until 3 o'clock till you're parallel with the trampoline. Finishes up with a full and full out Pike. Controls it at the end, keeping us on our toes over Susan here. Stringfellow. Susan Stringfellow. Just a couple extra bonus jumps to uh, really soak in the moment on the trampoline. Got to do it, got to do it. She'll look to tomorrow's finals. Hopeful for a great outcome. This is Heather Chan now. Heather had a good clubs routine, so hopefully she continues it. has a knot, so very unfortunate. Hopefully she can quickly untie it. Crowd encouraging her. In the case of sometimes the ribbon gets so tangled that the gymnast is actually for almost like forced to take the spare ribbon, but that was pretty quick. It's a quick risk assessment. that the wrong direction but she was able to complete the rotation it was you know she, yeah. she moved her roll right in position a lot of times I can only imagine in rhythmic right when you release it for a toss and you know it's going another direction again one of those moments where you have to think quickly that half second where you decide which way you're gonna rotate how many rotations you're gonna do Very nice planche from Heather Chan. Recovering well after that early knot. Good recovery from Heather, which she tends to struggle with sometimes. So it's good to see her recover and complete the routine. Gutsy performance for Heather Chan as we move now to Shea Silhan. Difficulty in her first exercise, so she'll look to rebound here. Taking her time underway now. Here we go, opening with the Rudy out pike a little bit on the side. She's back to the middle, half and half out tuck, half out tuck, double back pike, finishes up with a one and three Rudy ball out. I'm sure she's happy to put all 10 skills on her feet. Not too many problems, but a little bit low on difficulty, but hopefully she can make up for it in execution. Shea Silhan there of TNT Express, now our final look today at Laura Zhang. 
huge score already under her belt tonight. Over 18. Yes, it's good to see Laura claim one event. Clubs, hopefully she's looking to claim another event here. It's a very powerful routine for Laura. Threw it far. Yeah, but she knew to do her rotations long and far and would, won't have any deduction for that. Before Laura catches the ribbon, she already has that confidence knowing that she's going to catch it. And here, change of rhythm, you see, great for her artistry. You can tell this is a routine she's really performing with confidence. You have to have that faith that the stick will be where you are reaching for it. Small drop there on the match, unfortunate. But in general, Laura's a very strong competitor with the ribbon. Very cool and take on dancing steps right there, using the floor and changing the levels. Not bad. Very interesting routine for Laura. A little bit of mis mistake in the middle, but good comeback for her. Laura Zhang knowing she could have done better, but will rely on that difficulty and unmistakable presentation as we'll close out this rotation with Jessica Stevens, her second exercise on trampoline. First year senior elite. We might see another Trippis from Jessica. We've seen one from Claire. 10 years ago, there was only maybe a handful of girls in the world who can do it, and now we are seeing Girls, first year senior elite. Yep, and there it is. Trippis tuck to open, followed by a double back tuck and a Rudy out pike. Getting in a little bit of trouble there. Looks like she's gotten back on track. Back layout getting her rhythm back in there and finishes up with a double layout. Jessica There's Jessica Stevens' second effort today. We close out this rotation of competition at the 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships. We'll be back with the final rotation next. Let's see it, your last chance to show me your Carlton or running man. Oh, we got some up there. I see you up there. That's good, that's good. Oh yeah, that's he's been going at it. Careful, it's coming at you fast. I tried, buddy, I tried. I'm looking for a good Carlton. You see a good Carlton, Ollie? Check it out, check it out, here we go. So, we're on to Rhythmic now, and we're gonna bring the dads out to see what kind of moves they got. Now, it just so happens, this is the first time in history that this has happened. This is the defending dad champion from last year. Yeah. And his daughter is actually wearing her prize. This has never happened before. 
But these guys are confident. They feel ready to go. We've randomly selected the order to make sure that we're being fair, okay? So the defending champion drew the first card. So we're going to let him go first. We're going to ask all of the other fathers to come over here to watch these amazing moves. Step off the floor. You can have one. Do you need to tell your dad one last thing? Anything? No. You're positive in him. You believe in him. Okay. All right. DJ Patrick. Oh, you got to get in your, okay. You let me know when you're. Go ahead, DJ Patrick. was a good finish right there. I have to say, that was very good. High five. I mean, the finish, the finish did it all. Do you, how do you feel about your performance? Oh, it's outstanding. Yeah, it's. It, it can't beat me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Come sit right over here. Here we have um, second. Come on, come on out, sir. Yep. How you doing? Very good. Are you excited? Oh, I'm so excited now. You look like it. Yeah. Okay. Come on right over here. Now, he was good, but I saw your moves, and I know you can do this. Your daughter's, she said, if you don't pull this off, just don't come home, but, but keep paying for everything. Okay? W are you ready? You want to take your position? Okay. You let me know. Oh, wow. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, DJ Patrick. Let's hear it for him. Oh, that was that was beautiful. Yeah, how do you feel? Oh, I think I'm number one now. I think you are number one too. I think you're number one too. You got skills. Okay, sir, come on out. Come on out. You got this. You have the chance to just be a champion. All right, I'm gonna try my best. I believe in you. I mean, but they're all champions here, right? They're all champions. You're all champions, the political answer. Take them down now. Let me know when you're ready. Strike your, strike your start. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Kick it, DJ Patrick. Wow! Unbelievable! Ah, oh, it's okay. Don't give up. Let's hear it for a Milwaukee! Oh! That, he was done with his routine. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. He was done with his routine. Okay, dads, come on out here. That was unbelievable. Beautiful. It actually made me cry. Okay, stand right here. What, sir? Induction all day long. Well, he's got a nothing on the roof. Okay, well, you know. Okay, okay, okay. That happens sometimes. <laughs> okay, uh, it's going to do by crowd participation. So when I put my hand over the head of the gentleman, let me know if you want him to win. Gymnastics Dad Champion. You did it, sir. Let's hear it for him. Ollie, give me the shirts. I need the shirts. Here we go, guys. Yeah, make, make up, make friends. Actually, this one's for you. 
And this one's for your dad. We'll see you back here next year. Yeah, we'll pay, we'll pay for you to be in the building. You just got to get, you got to pay for yourself to get here and pay for your ticket. And, uh, and then you can compete again. Okay. Give it up for him. One big round of applause. Starting off our final rotation on second evening of coverage at the 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships, Serena Liu of Isadora with Ribbon. Serena has a really strong Carmen routine that usually displays more of her artistic side. There are some rhythmic Thanks. classics that we see throughout the years. Laura Zhang used this music last year. Yes, Carmen is a music that it's rhythmic, a rhythmic world, banger. yeah, they love it. Using the food taste exactly to the point of music. Threw it a little far, but saved it. Ooh. Oh, and super unfortunate. Oh, another drop. Hopefully, she'll be able to recover from this, but those would be large penalties for both of those. Unfortunate series of events. Unfortunate routine for Serena. Very sad to see. Hopefully tomorrow she'll have a better day. Bummer for Serena Liu. Smiling about it now, but disappointment. Our next acro Competition will be Emily Davis and Aubrey Rosillier. Always good to see a senior women's pair on the floor. They're a little bit harder to maintain at such a high level than the other events. Lots of routines today with words. Starting with the Diamadoff to high. Very clean. synchronization in the choreography after their static individual balances. Setting up here. I definitely like this style for them. A dislocate to high. Not a position you see often, which is a yogi. She does it very well. The head has to go all the way through and show all the way on the other side. And then a motion to arch and the base motions to slit. Nice arch position. Motion to sit. Very solid so far. Now we're 
we're seeing them move from hand balancing to foot balance skills. Two to one in the needle. Crocodile through to straddle. Or pike? Straddle? No, straddle that's, pike? A, that's a two to one straddle, and then now you're seeing the base move motion to a very difficult position and stand on the floor. Difficult skills like that are what set them apart. They're in the elite category. Especially at the end. That was done very well. Very, very clean balance routine for them. Great routine for Davis and Rosillier of AGSA. Next competitor will be Halle Piante. Another younger competitor here, but has shown already strong results in the first half of this season. Definitely going to give Claire, the veteran of this group, a run for her money. Claire's leading after the first group. And let's see what Hallie here has to offer and what strategy she takes for her four difficulty skills here in her first routine. And here she goes. She starts off with a one and three quarters. Granny ball out, a little bit slow, has to bend her knees a little bit. But she's still pushing, trying to gain height all the way through towards the end of her routine. A half and Rudy out, half out to the side. Woo. Full and full out, back to the middle. Ooh, and she can take a deep breath, and we can too. Found a way to make it happen. Hallie Piontek, her first routine. Finishing her day with the ribbon will be Brigitte Budginas. We've seen some mistakes throughout most of the ribbon routines, so hopefully consistent routine for, uh, sorry, for Brigitte. Guys, you see even another trend of one sleeve there and the other not. Always trying new trends, something to always trying to make something different, excite the judges, which is so hard to do now after so many years and so many different athletes. With soft music like this, it's very hard to keep the ribbon moving so quickly while being graceful with the body. But she's doing a great job, great ribbon technique. She was a little short on those last two fotes, so she wouldn't get credit for the last two, but she will get credit for all the ones before that. So far, so good for Brigitte. Looks to finish up strong. Great routine for Brigitte. Very nice. Nice way to end her efforts with ribbon tonight. Brigitte Budginas of Burlow Gymnastics. Now over to trampoline 2016 Olympian Nicole Ossinger. hoping for a good performance from Nicole tonight and tomorrow because since Trampoline has made its debut in the Olympics in 2000, no U.S. representative has come back and won a national title after the Olympic Games. So Nicole could be the very first one that we see after 17 years. Already setting herself apart from the competition, great height Starting off with a back three quarter Cody. Granny straight there. Back layout, a little bit towards the back of the trampoline. There's a full and half out tuck, double back tuck. Half out tuck, nice kick out. Half in Rudy out, a little bit outside of the box, but showing good form. 
Hossinger getting one under her belt this evening. Solid performance. It'll score fairly well, I think, across all the sections of her total score. Here we go, the mixed pair of Axel Osborne and Tiffany Williams of Realis. They're looking to rebound after a disappointing dynamic exercise last night. They're so strong and they have so much experience. I feel like with the name Axel, you're just destined for greatness. Right. <laughs> Well, and we mentioned their coach, Yuri Fyodorov, and I wanted to confirm his world medal title, and it's at a staggering 15 world medals that he's won over the course of his time that he's coached. And last year, they added to that a nice ring to a table position. It's a unique motion for a base. Actually, now in the new rules, have limited the amount of motions you can do in one skill set down to four. And I believe that's due to Yuri because he will put in, he'll, he'll have his athletes do so many motions in one skill and they'll just rack up difficulty. It's, it's insane. Beautiful uh, over arch in a wide hand position, they get extra difficulty for the wide hands. Tiffany known for her ability to over arch, maybe extra over arch. And upcoming their signature skill. This isn't done in the many mixed pairs and they do it so well. Just hold a little extra just to give a little oomph at the end. Very beautiful. Way to come back there. Nice work on the balance exercise of Tiffany Osborne and or Axel Osborne and Tiffany Williams of Realis. Next competitor on trampoline will be Sarah Webster. Sarah is also from TNT Express. Like I said, half, I think about just about half of the women's program here reigns from Louisiana at TNT Express. Sarah also starting out with a back to Coda Cody. Looks like she's gonna be putting all of her difficulty elements at the end of her ten still routine. She's showing good lines. Those legs are tight, strength together. There's one an unorthodox move there. It's called a brandy in back out. Finishes up with a full in, full out. Sticks the landing. Really she's great tight form throughout. She's gotta be happy with that routine. First routine under her belt. We'll see her again momentarily. Finishing her night with ribbon is Eliza Cohen of California Rhythms. Eliza, I believe, is actually the youngest one out of the top 10 competing tonight. Very nice. You even see from yesterday, she has more confidence today. Got out the first day competition nerves, which is very good to see. food taste to the music. Something you'll notice about first year athlete like Eliza takes a bit more time to prep 
for those throw elements. Exactly. And earlier she caught the risk at the tip of the ribbon, which will be a deduction. Throughout the routine, it's important to hold it by the very end. And if the judges see the grip sticking out of um, the palm of the hands, if it's not intentional, they will deduct for that. A little far back, but she was able to save it, but the ribbon was on the floor there. Very good for Eliza. She's been doing consistent, doing well. She should be very happy with herself. Day two in the books for Eliza Cohen as we now move to the second exercises for women's tramp. This is Hallie Piontek. This is the fun routine. This is where they get to show off all the elements that they've been working so hard on and trying to master in the gym. And not only do they have to master these, these skills, but they have to be able to swing out of them with absolute control. Here we go, starting off with a full and half out pike to a half in, half out pike, a little bit towards the back of the box. Double back tuck to the side, Rudy out tuck, getting her rhythm back with a back tuck there. and finishes up with a full and half out tuck to a full in, full out tuck. She can breathe, she has made 10 skills to her feet and we will see her tomorrow in the final to fight another day. Ali Piontek finishing her day one of competition. Now we move to Aisley Boynton and Maxim Sedachenkov. Had a great night one in the dynamic. It's always interesting too to see the two different mixed pairs. One so experienced with the taller top, and now a new mixed pair. Shorter, smaller top. Able to fix that uh, cannonball to two to one handstand. That was a really good save. Arch is a little high, and the base also motioning to a table and then to sit fix that arch a little bit at the end. Very different music. And Aisley with her leotard, a very high collar. We don't see that very often in acro, but it is allowed. I don't know if she does now, but um, her mom was making all of their leotards for a while. Just insane amount of like craftsmanship that goes into making those leotards. Solid two to one contact here. In the stack position moving to two to two. Very clean second skill. Their difficulty and balance is lower than the other mixed pairs, so they're gonna work really hard play off of their clean execution. Finishing up their routine with the final countdown. A little bit of a unique mount with the half turn drag into the cannonball over into a flag. And then into an over arch. In order to get difficulty, the heels have to be lower than the hands. Very nice. Some individual tumbling. A little bit of a unique ending and very unique ending pose. That was a nice and clean routine for the mixed pair. Aisley well done. Boynton and Maxim Sedachenkov finish up with their balanced routine. Second pass here for 2016 Olympian Nicole Ossinger. I believe.
believe Nicole be opening with a full in half out straight where the total score is made up of so many different parts. Nicole really thrives in the execution part of her total score and you'll see that in her straight legs tight to and together she'll be opening all of her skills at 12 o'clock and holding until she is parallel <laughs> and she it looks like she's been working on her time of flight here as well she is getting up there and there's that full and half out straight followed by a half already out tuck nice early opening a little bit in the corner there Rudy out tucked towards the springs, but she is fighting for every bit she can get. Half out pike to the side, but finishes it up with a full in, full out straight. All in all, a good routine for Nicole. Looks It'll a bit disappointed with herself, but again, tonight is about two solid routines. And you know what, as, as a competitor, I don't know if you'll ever be really satisfied. You know, you always want a little bit better. All USA Gymnastics disciplines seem to attract that type of athlete. Never settle for even what you thought was your best. Looking now at the final routine for Elizabeth, or excuse me, Katarina Kapitanova. Katarina has a really strong, quick routine. As you'll see, she'll just be moving around the carpet throughout the entire team. Often ribbon takes the most energy, the most strength, and having it always the last out of the four events is, tends to be very difficult. Oh, fortunate drop there. She could have reached for it. That was a very difficult match day there though. So ribbon claims another victim this evening. Yes, and with the drop, it's always important to make sure that they still match the music and recover quickly. Otherwise, they'll get artistry deductions for being late throughout the entire routine. Oh. Suit tangled during the jump. High energy having to match the musicality. It only keeps getting quicker and quicker. No time to breathe, no time to rest. That was right in her hand, but the drop was there. Fortunate routine for Ekaterina. A few drops and a tangle. Hopefully tomorrow, better routines for most of them. Looking toward finals day will be Kapitanova. Closing out the women's trampoline Day one competition with her second exercise, it's Sarah Webster. We saw an unorthodox move from Sarah in her compulsory routine, that first routine, that brand hand back out, that twisting in the first element. Now this new rule of four difficulty elements in the first routine makes it harder because now you have to have 14 double somersaults instead of 12. Whoa, getting close to the springs there. And Coach Dimitri pushes in the mat for safety, and her routine looks like it will be judged out of two or three skills, depending on when they decide she touched the mat first. Difficult reality to deal with at closing the women's trampoline competition. Here is our final look. The leader after day one, Evita Grispinas. Evita is definitely a top contender either for the national title or second. She's been doing very well so far, very confident. Today has been something with the ribbon. Often also gymnasts tend to complain about if the air conditioning is on, they say that it blows the ribbon. I don't know if that's the case for them now, but. Handle everything. Exactly. There are times where you compete in super humid countries where there's no AC at all and it just sticks everywhere. So it's a matter of being super in control, keeping the ribbon really tight away from the body. But Evita's doing great so far, keeping their team going. 
very difficult catch over there. Vita has really matured throughout the years. Just a second year senior, she moves super confidently, super grown up. Has her eyes on a possible world championship berth later this year. That's She's doing well so far in Milwaukee as she closes out her ribbon exercise. Great routine aside from the very first thing, but she should be getting a good score for that routine. Excellent work for Griskinas as she closes out competition in rhythmic and we're gonna stay with you all because there's an exciting opportunity to watch the men's group acro perform an exhibition exercise. Maria, I know you have seen this routine practiced before and are super excited for it to be on display here. You see a lot of men's four groups in the European champ uh, competitions. Uh, it's a lot more common to see um, boys just have a bigger participation in aggro out there. So it's always a treat when we get to see men's fours in the United States. Uh, EAGC is consistent in producing men's fours. Daniil Katsavetsky, he's a very experienced men's four coach. And uh, this particular men's four all have character, all match each other well. It's, Sean it's gonna be a real fun routine. U Torrent, Daniel Disman, Grant Shields, and Sean Shields. Imagine trying to get four boys to all work together and continue on in a training, working together. It's it's a difficult thing to do and they managed very, very well. We talked about the acro community being so closely knit. They have a ton of support here in the stands. Full on and the bases switch places at the same time. A little readjustment so they can do their full and pike super high. It's always great to see the great extension in the dance, nice straight legs, lots of energy. And switch bases here as well for the lay on. The top with so much confidence in the catch. Individual tumbling, all different types. much energy. Keeping it going throughout this dynamic routine, crucial. Another type of mount into a souk. And a souk full dismount, very nice as well. Lots of amplitude. Great routine. Men's group, what a treat. World's bronze medalist, Sean Pudhorn. out day two of competition, the BMO Harris Bradley Center. We'll be back tomorrow evening for our final day of coverage here. Remember to follow along using hashtag USA Gym Champs on all our social media channels. Have a great night. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we present the individual event awards for the senior elite competition of the 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships in Rhythmic Gymnastics. We begin with the top scoring senior elite gymnast with hoop. In third place, winning the bronze medal from North Shore, Camilla Feely. Winning the silver medal in second place from North Shore, Laura Zhang.
the 2017 USA Gymnastics Hoop Champion, winning the gold medal with a top score of 17.7. For North Shore, Evita Griskanes. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 USA Gymnastics Championship Senior Elite Hoop Medalist in Rhythmic Gymnastics. And now, the top scoring senior elite gymnast with ball. In third place, winning the bronze medal for North Shore, Laura Zhang. Winning the silver medal in second place from North Shore, Evita Griskanen. The 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships ball champion winning the gold medal with a top score of 17.534 for North Shore, Camilla Peely. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships Senior Elite Ball Medalist in Rhythmic Gymnastics. And now, the top scoring senior elite gymnast with clubs. In third place, winning the bronze medal, representing North Shore, Evita Griskanas. Winning the silver medal in second place from North Shore, Lily Mizuno. The 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships Clubs Champion earning the gold medal with a top score of 18.084 from North Shore, Laura Zhang. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 USA Gymnastics Championship Senior Elite Clubs medalist. Our final awards for the evening are for your top scoring senior elite gymnast with ribbon. In third place, winning the bronze medal from North Shore, Camilla Peely. Winning the silver medal in second place from North Shore, Laura Zhang. The 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships Ribbon Champion, earning the gold medal with a top score of 16.267 from North Shore, Evita Griskinas. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 USA Gymnastics Championships Senior Elite Ribbon Medalists.
We thank you for joining us at the USA Gymnastics Championships tonight. We hope to see you back here at the BMO Harris Bradley Center for our next session of the USA Gymnastics Championships. Competition will start tomorrow with an afternoon session of rhythmic gymnastics for senior elite group and individual gymnasts. Doors open at 1245 and competition starts at 1.30. And then tomorrow night, everyone's back for our final evening of competition. Doors open at 5.15 and competition will begin at 6. Please make plans to join us at that time and have a safe trip home.